Kia ora everybody. Kia ora everyone. Today we're very excited to be sharing this story. A good friend of ours, Tanea, introduced us to an amazing woman called Mona Lee. <laughs> Kia ora, how are you? She makes traditional Māori kākuhu with harakeke. Mona Lee invited us over to her house. First she showed us her traditional... Don't tell me. You can do it. Kitty? Yep. That's it. Yeah! This is my favourite here. This one is from Uri Nui from Makuya. He gave it to my papa. Probably in about 1950. You know, it's real old uh, Taranaki styles, eh? You know, it's not all fine and intricate and, you know, like these kiti for Kairo. But you look at the work involved, eh? And it's just so, you know, it's just perfection. So cool, so basic, practical. Then you have talented people like Mona Lee who take it to a whole nother level. Intricacies, details, um, still utilizing all the traditional methods. How long does this take? Um, I guess from harvesting to the finished piece is probably a good four months work. And that's working every day. Yeah, every day. The definition of slow fashion slow right there. Slow fashion. <laughs> what got you into making these? I was just really, What's the word? Inspired by the woman's body and clothing and enhancing who we are as wahine. There was just something really special about embracing all wahine, using the talent and gift that's been passed down from my ancestors. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> However, when I found the muka, when I found this in, in the plant, in the harakiki, that was it. It was all over. She taught us a little bit about the respect that they have for Harakiki. About how the plant has a pepe, which is a baby. Can you see the middle one? It's called the pepe. And then on the outside of that is the parents, and then on the outside of that is the grandparents. The baby needs both of the parents on both sides to help it grow. If I was to come in here and cut one of the parents out, then um, it's, the baby will die. Yeah, or weaken as well. Whenever we cut, we also take the, the tupuna plants first, the grandparents first. Mm. Whenever you harvest anything from either the ocean, from the ngahiri, which is the forest, or even the harakeke, you always say karakia, which is a prayer. It shows that you respect and you're grateful for what you're about to take. You know where it's coming from. In turn, when you go to use it, you use it with a whole heap of love and respect as well. She showed us how she cuts the harakeke. There's a certain way you have to do it where if you cut on an angle, the rain can still run down. Otherwise, right, if yeah. I cut it this way, if I cut it that way, the rain will come and it will sit in here uh, yeah. and it will rot out the baby. The sap inside, how you can use it for heaps of different things. It's kind of like an aloe vera gel. So you can use it for like sunburn, cuts on your skin. It's like a natural glue thing. She uses it for her kakaho as well. Itchy bites. Oh, oh well, honey bit. <laughs> so whenever you're, you're out on the road, just try and find a harakeke. I knew that most of our plants have healing qualities, but I didn't actually know about that sap. I have tasted it and it's disgusting. It's Unfortunately, really it didn't glue his mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> And then after the sap, she um, showed us how she actually gets the fibers out of the harakiki. There's a shiny side here, and that's the dull side. So if we touch on the dull side. Yep, cool. Kutai. That's it. Yes, which is a muscle shell. Uses the kutai to then strip back all of the harakiki outside. And that's not beautiful. That's so cool. <gasps> that's so easy. Yeah. This is called muka. These are the fibers that we used to make our kakahu. I was amazed to see that inside. I was like, what the heck? I thought you guys just brought this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't actually think about where it actually came from. There's a multitude of uses for this, as you can imagine. Once she got the fibers, she split it into two and then she put it onto her leg and then she rolled it down her leg, turned it into a twine. Like, like this. that. It was amazing. She did it so fast. I was so shocked. It's done in a way where the twine intertwines into itself. And it doesn't undo. So you yeah. don't have to tie a knot at the end. You can see here. It's amazing. And then she uses that for her kakaho. Go from the karakia to cutting of the harakeke in a very respectful way. I need to uh, make that known that traditionally a very respectful law of our earth. Papatua nuku. To me, this is my gold. This is the gold. What you find in those, you know, the fibres you find in the leaves, eh? It's mm. just something that does to me. I don't know. I don't know if it's because it's ancient or 
because our, our tūpuna was so sophisticated. So Mona Lee, myself and Danny Hayes, we all got together at White Studios and we created some of the photos that I respect, love the most out of my whole career. Incorporate everything I believe in, my culture, ethical, sustainable. Awesome people doing cool stuff together. It's awesome as. Eh? Stoked that we got to introduce Chanel to Mona Lee. Thanks Mona Lee for having us in your home. It was awesome as meeting you and just having a huge appreciation for my Māori culture, learning more about it, understanding more about it and just learning also where traditionally clothes actually come from yeah. and the processes of how traditionally they were all made. A little different from H&M, eh? Way, holy. <laughs> and thank you for my first hongi. Have a hongi? Oh, this will be my first. No way. It was amazing that you were my first. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm nervous, yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. 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 So, yep. Just come to me. That's it. That's it. And breathe in. That's so cool. Thank you. My first ever. Love you guys. Love you. Kakite. Kakite. I bet you do it. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> you saw I was going to do it and you just cut in. <laughs> this is what fashion's about. Yes. This is, yeah. <laughs>